May we remain standing just a moment while we read the Word, go right straight to the Word tonight, so we won't take too much of the time. I want you to turn with me tonight to the book of Exodus, and the beginning with the fourth chapter of the book of Exodus. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. It became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprosy as snow. And he said, Put thine hand to the bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the second sign. Let us bow our heads. And with our heads bowed and our hearts too, I wonder if there's any in here tonight who has requests for prayer. Would you let it be known as you raise your hand? God grant your request. Our Heavenly Father, we deem this such a privilege to come to you in prayer, coming in the name of the Lord Jesus, and are promised by him that if we ask anything in his name, it will be granted. Thou knowest the need of every one of us. You know what our hands represented as they went up. I pray, Father, that you'll answer each request tonight. Get glory. And now let the great teacher of the Word, the Holy Spirit, come upon us tonight and reveal himself to us and, and make himself known unto us by the, the evidence of his resurrection. May he come among us tonight, Lord, and, and visit our hearts. Speak to us through the things that he's promised for this day. May the words that's been promised for this hour be manifested before us that we might rest assured in this great troublesome time that you said would come up on the earth to try all people. And it certainly has come to that time, Father, when men are tried. And there's so many different angles to no one hardly knows what to do. Lord, I pray that you'll make known to us tonight that you're here and with us, sure to help us. Grant our request, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. I've been just a teeny bit late each night. Now, I keep thinking of this microphone, but it's the one to the recorders. But this year, I think it's the one that I'm supposed to listen to speaking. Tomorrow night is the banquet night, so don't forget it. I think it's, I guess it's been announced on where for the people to go. We certainly appreciate your cooperation and the great things that our Lord has done. Now, tonight, I think that if, unless we know the Word of God, we don't know what to do. We can't have faith until we know what is the will of God, and why, then if we know it is the will of God, the Word of God says something, then we can gladly follow that. Now, if the Lord Jesus is walking around personally on the earth tonight in human flesh, and he said, tomorrow it'll be raining all day long. Now, it would be very easy for me to take an umbrella when I leave in the morning, because he said 
Now, if he didn't say it, I don't know then what to look to. So that's the way it is. And anything we do, we want to know the hour, the age we're living. And to the newcomers, this week we have tried to show that God, from the beginning, knows the end. That makes him infinite. If he isn't infinite, infinite, then he isn't God. And he's got to be omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omnipotent to be God. So all power knows all things and all places and, and, and knows the end from the beginning. If he doesn't, then he isn't God. So there isn't nothing really out of cater. It's us. But nothing in God's word is ticking just like a clock. And when that hour comes for it to happen, the word's allotted for that age, it happens. We might think it go isn't going to happen. Sometimes it happens and we don't know it. Jesus said one time, they said to him, why is it the, the, all the scribes say that Elias must first come? See, now they believe that. They believe that Elias was coming. And Jesus looked at them and said, Elias is already coming. You didn't know him. Now, see, it passed right by them, scribes, ministers, disciples, and it was John the Baptist. And he come in every way that the Elias was supposed to come, yet they didn't recognize him. And now it behooves us to recognize the hour that we're living and the time we're living. Upon that, I want to speak tonight of the voice of the sign. A strange text, yet God does strange things in unusual ways. That's what makes him God because he's, he's supernatural and everything that he does, he, he does it, he can do it in the supernatural because he is supernatural. Now, the voice of the sign, and it is a, there is a voice to sign, there's a voice to blood, blood spake out from the earth and, and so forth, the righteous blood of Abel spoke out against Cain, and the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ speaketh greater things than the blood of Abel did. Now, our seating tonight, or our scene opened in Exodus. And the time of the Exodus is the calling out time. And the Exodus was at hand. Moses, the servant of the Lord, had been called to a, a line of duty. And doing what he thought, he was highly educated in Egypt, learned all the, the wisdom of the Egyptians, and seemingly... He had a, a way that, in the, being a great military genius, that he is able to deliver his people from under that bondage because he was the next coming Pharaoh. And how easy it would have been for him to have done it. But you see, if that would have been the case, then it would have been a natural thing. God don't take natural things. He takes supernatural things to prove himself. So out of 40 years of education of the highest that he could get and the best that he could get, the best scholarly scholar he could be with the understanding from his mother, his tutor, that he was to be the one to deliver the people. And he went out in the power of his understanding and slew an Egyptian. And from that, find out that his efforts failed and then run into the desert. And what Egypt, in education, put in him 40 years. It took God another 40 years to get it out of him. See? So he wouldn't trust in his ethics of education. He would trust in the supernatural. And now, the time was at hand that God had made a promise to Abraham 400 years before that time that his seed would sojourn in a strange land and they'd be brought out after 40 years. They would be brought out with a mighty hand. He would deliver his people by a mighty hand. And when the time of the promise drew nigh, that's when God put Moses on the scene. Moses, in his absolute failure, went into the wilderness. Now, the type here, there's a wonderful type that we sure don't want to miss. See? Type. God was bringing Israel his people out a nation, a nation out of a nation, a nation out of a nation, a beautiful type of today that God is calling his bride out of a church, 
Christian bride out of a Christian church, a bride church out of a church which is called, in the Bible referred to, I've got several notes and scriptures written down here on this lesson tonight, is called sometimes the chosen, the elected, or the remnant of the woman's seed. It was uh, called the bride, what God by his foreknowledge ordained to be. That is, the bride comes out of the church. See, the whole thing is the church, but God takes a people out of that church as a bride. He said he would, and he did it. Notice, or he will do it. Notice, see how he did it, and the manner and how he did it. We want to look at this now as he brought out Israel, how he did it, and the manner that he, he did it. Notice when the time of the promised word was to be fulfilled, God called Moses by foreordination and elected him to the job. See? God's always got the person on the mark at the time. Nothing fails with God. He said it, it can't fail. If it fails, then God fails because God is the Word. Notice, now the Word had to be manifested. And when the Word had to be manifested of a promise, God always sends a prophet to manifest that promise because the Word of the Lord comes to him. Moses foreordained for the purpose, was called to the job. No one else could do it. When God has, has called a person for a job to do, there's no one can take his place. There's no one can take your place, your peculiarity. How often I've wondered how I would like to take Old Robert's place, how I would like to take Billy Graham's place. Somebody like that, uh, like Billy Graham, go speak to an audience of people, call sinners to the altar, forget it, go home. Not have to stand there and wrestle again. I cannot be Billy Graham, but neither can Billy Graham be me. We are both, I cannot be Old Roberts, Old Roberts cannot be me. You're each one set in God's economy, just for its place, one fast all the time and communes with God, while another casts out devils because this one's fasting. But it's the whole body of Christ working together. The unity, when we see these denominational barriers breaking us up, that's what hurts my heart. See, because that's the thing that separates us. We are one. Amen. There's no big people among us. There's no great people among us. We are all the same. We're children of God. There's only one great among us, and that's Christ. We must recognize him, and if we seek honor one from another, we can't have faith. Because we're having faith in one another, we've got to have faith in Christ. He is the one among us that we must have faith in, and then faith in what he's doing and has given to us. Now, no one could take Moses' place, no matter how much you run and how much you try to get away from it, yet God knows what he's doing. He knows just what he had to take and make out of Moses. These things had to happen. Now watch. Uh, no one could take his place. Now watch. God gave him a sign to prove his calling and claims when he went down in Egypt. Now, God always gives a messenger a sign and a voice of that sign, and that sign identifies the man. If it's written in the Scripture, like John said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He said, are you the Messiah? He said, I am not the Messiah. But I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, as the prophet Isaiah said. He could plainly identify himself. Now, then in that, we find that God always never changes his way of doing anything. He cannot change. God does everything exactly the same way when he, he sets his system together. As I said the other night, he made one decision. Man should be saved by the shed blood of an innocent one. We've tried everything else to get man saved. We tried to take him to a place to where we build a city. Nebuchadnezzar did. And um, they built a tower. Nimrod did. Uh, they had a law. 
And they've had temples, they've had churches, they've had organizations, they've had educational systems, denominational systems, trying to get man to God. It every bit failed, it always will fail. It comes right back to the shed blood. God's way of doing anything is spoke in his word, and this word is the entire revelation of Jesus Christ. Nothing to be added to it or taken away from it. Whosoever does it, the Bible said his heart will be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. If he does add anything or take anything from it, just take it the way it's written. The Bible doesn't need anybody to interpret it. God is his own interpreter. He interprets it by making what he says come to pass. That settles it. If God said it and he did it, that's all. There's no need to interpret it. The Bible said it's of no private interpretation. God's way of doing it. Ever true to his sense sign, he followed by his voice. Every sense that God sends a sign in the earth. Now, God never does nothing, the Bible said, until first he shows it to his servants, the prophets. Now, that you, if that's wrong, then the rest of it's wrong. See? He never does anything until he shows it, and that seer, prophet, is to uh, be identified that what he prophesies, we find out in Numbers 12, 6, that what he says comes to pass. Then uh, believe it. But if it doesn't come to pass, then don't believe it. And it must be for that is, no matter how much he says, and it comes to pass and whatever, if it isn't according to the word, then it's still wrong. It must be with the word. It must be set in order with the word for the sign of that time, the time that they're living in. Now, this had been promised by God that he was going to deliver his people with a strong arm. Now, in this word, he didn't call a priest, he didn't call a rabbi, he didn't call an executive. He called a shepherd out on the mountain, a runaway, born, foreordained prophet that didn't want his job. When you hear people desiring to be this, that, or the other, some just watch God never uses them. God had to hunt Moses down to get him. He had to hunt Paul down to get him. It's men that don't want to do it. They don't want things. Then God takes that man that he won't do it so he can show his glory by it. Now watch. Every, every true God-sent sign is followed by a voice. Now you just go to sure the text is the, the sign and the voice. If they won't believe the voice of the first sign, then they'll believe the voice of the second sign. Now the sign has a voice. And now every true God-sent sign has a voice, and that voice must speak according to the word that's given for that day. Just exactly. If the voice comes the same old voice of the same old, you see a sign, rather, and the sign that the man's doing is the same old school of thought, then you can say right then, that didn't come from God. If it keeps identifying the same old school of thought, it never did, it never has, it would be against God's program. It's got to be something new. It's got to be something that the people don't understand. It's got to, or it wouldn't be sent. It don't need to be sent if it's the same old school of theology. It's got to be something different, yet it's got to be identified in the Word that it is for that day. Be the positives of God's Word. It has to be that. There's no slip-ups to it. Got to be the truth. Got to be vindicated by God the truth. And the man who speaks it has to be vindicated of God to be a seer from God. Or it's wrong. They don't even, they don't even see it at all. don't even believe it. Signs are, are from God. The sign that follows, or the voice that follows the sign, must be the voice of God speaking from the Word for that age. Do you understand it? God gives signs. What does he do it for? Always gives signs. He told them that's what they'd look for him in the signs. God gives signs to attract the attention of his people. Now, let's study this thoroughly. The 
signs are given to attract the attention of the people. Because when a God said sign is given, God is ready to speak. God is ready to speak when the sign is given. If it comes from heaven, it's from God, and God is ready to speak, and he's trying to attract the people's attention. And the word comes to his prophet, and the prophet is identified by the sign that he shows. And then he comes to the word, and the word's made manifest. That settles it. You don't need any interpretation. God's already interpreted it. Just as perfect as it can be. Um, now notice, God gives the signs to attract the attention of the people. Here, the burning bush was the sign to attract the prophet. The burning bush, Moses is backside of the desert, herding his sheep, an old sheep herder, 80 years old, long beard, going along, down alongside of a familiar old path one hot morning, perhaps. And then all at once there came a bush on fire, and that bush did not consume. That was altogether unusual. Now Moses, being a scientist, which he was taught in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and they were greater scientists than we have today. So in being a scientist, looked like he said, now I'll go see what kind of a, a chemical is sprayed on those leaves if that tree doesn't burn. See, if he had approached it in a scientific way, it would have never talked to him. And so is it today. Amen. When we're trying to approach through school and education in a scientific way, you'll miss out a million miles. Right. Amen. Approach it like Moses with his shoes off. Humble. Humility. And now, there was a sign to attract the prophet. Now, there, that sign's got to have a voice. And when that voice spoke, if it would not have been scriptural, I don't believe the prophet would have listened to it. But watch how scriptural the voice was that accompanied the sign. It proved it was God. For he said, I have heard the groans of my people, and I remember the promise that I made to them. The sign, then the scriptural voice behind the sign. Now that shows exactly what I've just background. It must be a sign from God, and if it is, there's a scriptural voice behind it for the promise of that day. Not the same old school, the rabbis and things have been going through the schools and everything all along, all along the priests and so forth, but this is something new. And it's scriptural, it's a promise and a sign to attract the prophet. And then he said, now, before he goes down there, he's got to have something to uh, vindicate himself of being a prophet. See, before they would receive him, he said, they won't say it. The Lord has appeared to him. He said, then, I'll give you two signs to do. And that will attract the people's attention. And when the attention of the people is attracted, then speak these words to them. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I remember my promise, and I've sent you down to deliver them. I'll be with you. Did you notice his first sign? He had all kinds of impersonations of him. Everybody tried to throw down a serpent. That, is that into a run of people? I don't know what is. See? But what did, kind of a voice did they have behind it? Nothing. The Egyptian voice of the world. Yet they could perform the sign, but they didn't have the voice behind it to back it up. But Moses had thus saith the Lord. That was the difference. The impersonators finally went on for a long time, but finally played out. Do you know the Bible said that would take place again in the last days? As Jambes and Rambles stood Moses? So would man of reprobate mind concerning the truth. Who is truth? Jesus Christ. Amen. Reprobate mind concerning the truth. Now, Jehovah is going to speak by his promised word. He must then get this prophet ready to send down because it's always in his line of thinking, his line of doing, every time, send his prophet with the word and vindicates the prophet. Again, this is a promised sign. A prophet himself is a sign. The Bible said so. Amen. When you see times lapsing, and then see coming, take the history of the Bible, study it. Whenever you've seen a long lapse of time, but just when you've seen a prophet appear on, it was a sign of judgment. 
God was going to judge the world when he, or the nation or the people, when you saw a prophet coming. I preached a sermon that you tape, man, remember, the, a true sign overlooked. They always overlook it. They always have. But it was a sign of a coming judgment. Now, his word is fulfilled in his voice. What he promises, then he fulfills his word by the voice. The coming of a prophet is a warning sign that judgment is at hand. Always has been. Let me just quote one. Look at Noah rising up in the, last, in the, in the days of the Andalusian world. A prophet prophesying. What was it? Judgment struck immediately after. Moses went into Egypt, a vindicated prophet, with the signs of the prophet. What happened? Judgment struck Egypt right afterwards. Elijah come on the scene, the prophet, and prophesied to Ahab in that nation. What happened? Judgment struck it right afterwards. Right. John the Baptist come on as a sign. He was a prophet. Uh, he was a prophet's sign. Come on the earth. Uh, they know when he come on, the Messiah would speak after him. It had to be. Cause, get the, um, get the elected. What this is for is to get the elected people that's coming out, like in the days of Noah, like in the days of, of uh, Elijah, the 7,000 or 700 or whatever it was that hadn't bowed their knee, to call them out. John calling out the elected and give it over to Christ when he comes, swaps his church, says, I must decrease, he must increase, because he said, I'm just the voice of him crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Jesus, come the same way, gets the elected ready to hear the voice of God. That's what the prophetic sign is. Oh, if you follow these messages, get the prophetic. Get the elected ready. Yeah. Not the others will never hear it. It's the elected it's called. Hallelujah. Where did that angel come to in Sodom that did that sign? To Abraham and his group. Yeah. Stay away from Sodom, it's going to burn. Amen. Jesus promised it to repeat, you know, again, at this Sodom. Now, notice, what does it do? It gets the elected ready for the shelter of God, like in Noah's time and so forth. And what does it do? It condemns the intellectual unbeliever to judgment. It always has to spurn mercy, nothing left but judgment. So it gets the, the intellectual and the unbeliever ready for the judgment because what do they do? They condemn it. That's the reason the Jews eat their own flesh. That's the reason the blood ran out of the city when Titus, the great Roman general, rode in there, is because they had rejected the Holy Spirit. Yes. Judgment had to come because they had made fun of it. Jesus told them when they called him Beelzebub, that he said, I forgive you, the atonement had not been made. But said, when the Holy Ghost has come to do the same thing, to speak against it will never be forgiven. And that generation was never forgiven of it. Right. Judgment to the unbeliever. It's put out there for that purpose, to give light to the believer and darkness to the unbeliever. Just as the pillar of fire was, it made light to cross to the promised land and darkness to those who did not believe. God signs always does that. Put out the eyes of the unbeliever and give sight and light of walking to the believer. That's what it's sent for. If his prophecy is true, if the prophet's prophecy is true and comes to pass, then it is the warning of God. Now, in Numbers 12, 6, we find the same thing in the Scripture. The Bible was written by these men. Now, if we read in 2 Peter 1, 21, it said, Man of old, moved by the Holy Ghost, wrote the Bible. Also in Hebrews 1, 1, where we spoke the other night, God in sundry times and diverse manners spake to the fathers through the prophets. This last days through... Uh, Jesus Christ, his son. The pillar of fire, the sign, the voice, uh, the, the voice was uh, going to speak. The pillar of fire in the bush was a noted voice that God was fixing to speak. Notice, clearly now, don't miss this, when Miriam had laughed at her brother Moses, and she was a prophetess. When she laughed at him, 
And God came down in that pillar of fire. Moses knew that God was ready to speak. It was a sign. And the voice that followed it said, Don't you fear God? Said, There's none in the land like my servant Moses. Done the same when they raised up and said, uh, When Dathan raised up. And with Korah, the gain saying of him, There's more holy man than you. You think you're the only one in the bunch. God had ordained Moses to that job. Amen. And when they want to get out of that bunch to go with them and make themselves an organization, he said, separate yourself from them. Right. I'll condemn them, I'll consume them, and he did. The world got them. Now we find that's always been God's way. The pillar of fire indicates the voice is fixing to speak. Yes. Oh, Texas! How blind can you get? Do you still remember Houston? Now, there's a, a voice follows the sign. Moses, a prophet sign to Israel, promise that the word is ready to be vindicated. How perfect is God's word in order each time? Just even like the Urim Thundam, as I spoke of the other night. The Urim Thundam was there, and unless that sign come on that Urim Thundam, the voice was not recognized. There has to be a sign. The sign vindicates the voice. And the voice vindicates the sign that it comes from God. The voice of the sign is what speaks yes or no. If God refused it, then the voice speaks no. If the sign was there, God spoke yes. God's order never has changed. We can stay hours on that, but it never has changed. Look, Jonah, the prophet, Look at that sign. He was on his road to Tarshish, started to go to Nineveh, and took a, a road to Tarshish. Many condemned Jonah. Jonah don't deserve to be condemned. He was a prophet. The footsteps of the righteous is ordered of the Lord. And he started on his road to Tarshish, and we try to condemn the man. But Jesus didn't. Notice, he said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and nights. It was to be a sign. So must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and nights. And a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign given them from God, remember, but the sign of Jonas. What is Jonas' sign? The resurrection. And this is that Sodom generation. Adulterous, spiritual adultery, committing spiritual fornications against the truth of God, making fun of it. A wicked and an adulterous generation will seek for a sign and they'll get it. It'll be the sign of the resurrection. Look, Jonah, them people are heathen. And the great it's a commercial city. The great industry was fish. They uh, sent fish all over the country. The men were fishermen. That was the occupation. And they've been heathens. They worship animals and idols and become very wicked, like this nation now, full of sex and Hollywood and all kinds of, even into the churches. And notice what takes place. Why well, sometimes even sex appeal in the church is called modern. How can this nation stand under such a thing as that? Call yourselves Christians and act them such a thing as that? How can it stand? As my good friend Jack Moore said years ago, if God lets this nation get by with this, he'll be obligated as a just God to raise up some of and apologize to him for burning them up. You're bound for judgment. There's no other way to accept it. Write it down in your Bibles. I'm getting to be an old man. You sit. It doesn't go to judgment. Amen. If I live a normal life, I'll sit. Normal time. Another few years will turn it. Jonah, there's all out fishing about noontime. And here comes the God of the sea up the whale. Run up to the bank and spit the prophet out on the bank. What a sign! God 
delivered his prophet with a message. Now they've seen the sign, they believe the sign. Now what's the message? Repent. That's the voice of the sign. The voice of the sign is repent or within 40 days you'll be consumed. They knew enough to repent. Jesus said they'll condemn this generation because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, a greater than Jonas this year. The voice was repent or in 40 days you'll be consumed. John the prophet appearing, a prophet appearing sign after 400 years with no prophet that had all the intellectuals. I just imagine what a mess they had. 400 years, no prophet. But the time drew nigh that the Messiah was to come. Now, John was the sign, being a prophet, that the Messiah was ready to speak the voice of the sign because in Malachi 3 we find out, I send my messenger before my face. Elias was to come before his face, and Elias come. John in the spirit and power of Elias come and done exactly what the Scripture said, and they did not understand it. Scripture says so. He was the sign, a prophet sign, that the Messiah was going to speak. That prophet knowing it so well until he said, Why, there's one standing among you right now. That Messiah that I'm speaking of is among you. I'm not worthy to lose his shoes. He's the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm baptizing with water unto repentance. But he'll be after me. He's among you now. One day he saw a young man coming, walking down. He saw that pillar of fire in the form of a dove coming down from heaven. A voice saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. It says, Whom I'm pleased to dwell in. It's the verb before the adverb. So it's just the same. In who I'm pleased to dwell or in whom I'm pleased to dwell. Makes no difference. Notice, I'm pleased to dwell in him. John said, I bear record that he that told me in the wilderness, not at the seminary, in the wilderness said, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on. Hey, man, he's the one that'll baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I bear record it's the truth. What was it? That prophet was a sign that Messiah was ready to speak. What was the Messiah? The Messiah was the Word in full. He was the fullness of God. The prophets was a little flickering light. But in him was all that light. Was in this Messiah. For he was the manifested God made Emmanuel. God among us in human flesh. Messiah was ready to speak. And notice, the Bible says that the Word of the Lord comes to the prophet. Now here stood John that Jesus said was the greatest prophet ever lived. Jesus said so, Matthew the 11th chapter. What went she out to see? A man shaken by every wind, this denomination shall I give you more you do this? Not John. No, no. A man that can be shoved over, bluffed out. No, he was a raw, rugged prophet. But if you go to see a man that's all dressed up with a priesthood uh, garment on, and he said, no, nah. they stay in king's palaces. They marry the young, kiss the babies, and bury the old. That's gone. They don't know anything about a two-handed sword. So what did you go out to see, a prophet? He said, more than a prophet. Of course, he was the messenger of the covenant. It was promised by God to stand him. And notice, here's John standing in the water baptizing, saying he's coming. And here is the word, not more over heaven, but made flesh. The Word is flesh. What does that happen then? What's the order of God's Scripture? The Word came to the prophet right in the wilderness, right in the field. The Word came to the prophet. John looked up and he said, I have need to be baptized to thee. And my dear old brother, Dr. Davis, the missionary Baptist church, baptized me in Christian faith. If he's here tonight, I don't mean to hurt his feelings because he lives here in Texas. He's out here in Davis Mountain. Well, I remember us arguing on that one day, I just a boy. And I said, it don't sound right, Dr. Davis. He said, what happened? That then Jesus baptized John. And then John baptized Jesus because John hadn't been baptized. It didn't seem right to me. I kept on waiting, watching, wondering. I wouldn't say nothing about it. But one day when the Lord revealed it. Now watch what Jesus said. 
John said, I have need to be baptized for thee, and why are you coming to me? Jesus said, Suffer it to be so. For thus it is becoming to us to fulfill all righteousness. John knew who he was. There's the two leaders of the world, two leaders of the church, God and his prophet standing together. Now what they ought to know, Jesus said, Suffer that to be so. That is right. But thus it's becoming to us that we fulfill all righteousness, the promised word. The sacrifice had to be washed before it was presented. John baptized Jesus because he was the sacrifice. See, the sacrifice had to be washed before presented. Walked right out there and the sacrifice was washed and he presented right and he said, that's the Lamb of God. He went right up on the bank and here come the Spirit of God coming down upon him. said, this is my beloved son. See, he was presented then to the public. But before the sacrifice could be presented, it had to be washed first. That's the law of the Old Testament. All right. Messiah was fixing to speak because sure was a sign of the prophet. And when they seen that prophet come on the scene after all those 400 years without one, they knew next voice was Messiah. Now, you Bible readers think that hard for a few minutes. Watching his nature. How did they miss him? How did they miss knowing that with him, John? His, na- his nature was identified, his spirit uh, and nature was identified to be Elijah. Now notice what spirit, now he was John the Baptist, but the spirit of Elijah was upon him. Notice, first, Elijah was a man who loved the wilderness. See? And John was a man in the wilderness. And Elijah was a man that condemned that organizational system in that day with all he had. So did John. You generation of snakes, who's warned you to flee from the wrath? Don't you begin to say, I have this, that, or the other. God's able these stones to rise short in Abraham. Yes. See the two natures? And look at Elijah. He condemned all them painted-faced Jezebels of his day, them immoral women. What did John do? The same thing. The Rodian. Both of them was a cause of their death. Look at Elijah. After he'd done that great work, he'd get moody, laid out there and prayed for God to take him. John did the same. Even laid there and sent his disciples or said, go ask him, is he the one or do we look for another? Jesus knew that, and he was Elijah. That had to be his nature. He was identified exactly as Elijah was. He was in the spirit of Elijah. It's to come five times that spirit is. They used Elijah, Elisha, John, Malachi 4, and then to the Jews in the last days, the reincarnation. The spirit of Elijah. Notice. Now, today, I want you to look at our modern Ahab prophets today, letting their Jezebels cut their hair, paint their face, wear shorts, smoke cigarettes, and it's okay. Our, our Ahab prophets of the day, going with their school, sure, leading them around the man made creeds and denominations. What is it? Ahab prophets. We need another Micah to rise on the scene. Or in time of Ahab, Elijah come on the scene. That's who promised. Leading them around any way they want to go. If they don't mistreat them here somewhere, they go over and join this and still maintain their, their, their Christian profession. Well, they never was saved at the beginning. Their very nature proves it. Can you get grapes off of a thorn tree? Can you get watermelons from a pumpkin vine? The very nature shows they want nothing to do with the Word. They make fun of it and blaspheme it when it's written, Thus saith the Lord. These things are to happen. And they laugh at it and make fun of it. No wonder Jesus said, The Queen of the South shall rise up with this generation in the last days and condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to see a man with a gift of wisdom. He said, a greater than Solomon is here. Sure. Solomon, was, his day was one of the great days. The people all believed this gift that God gave them, this Solomon. And his, his fame went out everywhere. But if we people to this day, we Americans, we're always trying to find some program against communism. Here's God's program. Repent. Turn to God. Amen. Some program. If they had just due to that, we'd forget communism. 
And all Israel believed that gift that God gave them. If America would just give the, believe the gift that God's given us this last day, his son, in the form of the Holy Ghost, raised from the dead, living among us, according to his promise. We don't want to cherish that. It'll only go to the elected. For no man can come to me except my Father draws him. All the Father has given me, they will come. This seed sowing, it falls, some this way and that way, but they seed sowing anyhow. It'll catch its roots wherever it's at. They'll catch it. Notice, here they were. And we find out that in that day Ahab, the nation had got them Israelites doing any kind of things they want to do and still professing to be Israelites. How that Elijah condemned that generation with all that was in him and God vindicating him and he was the prophet just before the coming. So did John. Walked right up in Israel and married this woman uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Herod, his brother Philip's wife. Walked right into his face. He pulled no punches. He wasn't afraid some pestilence was going to put him out. He carried no fellowship card, only with God. He was his prophet. The word is with him. He didn't have to go to ask any bishop or deacon. He was anointed. He had the word. Walked right into his face and said, not lawful for you to have her. He pulled no punches to nobody. Them wicked women committing adultery, carrying on like Amos when he come on the scene, looked over it. There, we don't know even where he come from. My, how he must have looked upon that city of Samaria, like the tourists did all beautiful, and the preachers all in harmony with the, the nations and the league with the nations and everybody and still living in sin. His eyes narrowed, his bald head shined. And the, he come down, he didn't, wasn't much to look at, but he had thus saith the Lord. Amen. We need a Amos on the scene today. Would we receive him? Certainly not. <laughs> no more than he did. He'd come on the scene. He'd tear down every organization, every denomination, every short-wearing woman, every bobbed-haired Jezebel. He'd tear him to pieces. Amen. They'd Lord. kick him out on the street and say, that old fanatic. <laughs> but he'd have, thus saith the Lord. Of course, Amen. it's written that way. Right. The denomination received him? No. He had nobody to sponsor his program. But this great fine city of, of lust, like Samaria was, when they received this little unknown fellow with no fellowship card, nobody to sponsor him or anything, he didn't have any sponsorship. He didn't have any fellowship card, no school he come from, but he had dust, saith the Lord. Amen. And his coming as a prophet was a sign. His voice was from God, and it was identified in the days of Jeroboam II, everything he said had come to pass. Now we find... This day that we're living in. It's just a repeat of that again. Ministers, people ashamed to stand in the pulpit and the, the gospel becomes a meal ticket to them. They're afraid to say anything. Some man's going to put them out of this, that, there. There's only one man can put you out of heaven. That's God. Amen. And how are you going to be put out of heaven staying with his word? That's what he sent you for. Remember, the Bible said it's such a time as it was in the days of Elijah. In such a day as it was in the days of John, that Malachi 4 is going to return to the earth again. I will stand Elijah. Now, don't get that mixed up now with Malachi 3. I sent my messenger before my face. That was Elias, too. But in Malachi 4, he said, just before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come, when the whole earth will burn like an oven and the righteous shall walk out upon the ashes of the wicked. That's a millennium. I'll send Elijah the prophet. And what will he do? He will restore the faith of the children back to the apostolic father. Back to the word. He'll have to be a prophet. I'll send him. He'll be thoroughly identified. His nature will be the same as Elijah's was. Exactly. His message will be right on that line. He'll condemn, tear down. No fellowship, no cooperation, no nothing. But he'll have thus saith the Lord. I remember there's been all kinds of groups stand up and say, this is the Elijah's robe and this is Elijah's doctrine. A whole group, an organization turned into Elijah's group or Elijah's robe. That's not scripture. God never did deal with a group like that. When Elijah come on the scene and John the Baptist, both of them condemned the groups and the organization. 
And never did he condemn them the way they did Elijah and John both. Not a group or denomination, but both in both of their times condemned the groups and the organizations. What then? The end time sign will certainly accompany the end time voice. Elijah is supposed to come on the scene, a man anointed with that spirit, a woodsman, so forth, and lover of that, and come on the scene to vindicate. Now, watch what the scripture says now, and then you won't be deceived. See? The end time sign and the end time voice, God never did deal with the group nowhere in the scripture. He deals with one individual because every man is different from the other. Every man, our thumbs are different, our nose are different, our actions are different. He gets one man, he can get him perfectly in harmony so he can become that word. That's the reason Paul, he said, except I get exalted above the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, a messenger of Satan. See, Matthew wrote, Luke wrote, Mark wrote, all them, but they just followed Jesus and wrote what he said. But Paul had the revelation of who he was. That's the thing. He see his revelation was so great. He let him write the Bible, like Moses did the Old Testament. Yeah. That great man Paul, that revelation he had. He knew that Jesus of the New Testament was Jehovah of the Old. He had the revelation of it and could place it to the Hebrews, to the, and also to, to to the Romans and to the Ephesians and and all. He he wrote these letters. Notice after his sign had went forth. Then he wrote the letters. This nature of the coming will be the same. There will not be a group. It will be one man. God never did deal any other way but one man. Now, Elijah was not a group. John the Baptist was not a group. Amen. They were one individual. Amen. God, Malachi 4 doesn't say, I'll send a group. He said, I'll send Elijah. Amen. The word cannot be changed. Now watch, the end time sign and voice will come in the scripture order as it was promised. We won't know what will be the sign of the end. Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and 25, told us also in Revelations, all the way from the sixth or the first come over to the, well, the tenth chapter. Then he comes in the nineteenth chapter. Millennium sets in and he's coming, riding on a white horse. It'll come, the end time sign, now listen in closing. It'll come just exactly the way the Scripture says. Now notice, the voice of the sign. Now Jesus in Luke 17, 30, promised the sign of the end time, the last sign, was God manifested in a human body that could discern the thoughts that was in Sarah's mind and the tent behind her. That's what he said. That's the sign that he promised at the end. What did he say it would do? It would be known in the days, the last days, when the Son of Man will be revealed. Be revealed. When the Son of Man is revealed, that will be the sign he'll be revealed by. I see if that don't say that. It certainly does. Now, could you say that? No, it'll be something else. No, it'll be build a great building, a great this or this or some great ecumenical council or something. Oh, no. No, that's a long ways off. That's the, on the other side. It's against what God said doing, he would do. Notice what we said now. The scriptures will be just exactly because we have the Sodom sign in the natural. When was there any more homosexuals, perversions, and things as there is now? A wicked and adulterous generation when you can't even turn your television on. This is some kind of dirty, filthy... Hollywood stuff. And people who call themselves Christians will stay home from prayer meetings to see such. It shows what spirit in you. Right. And the women will dress just like those. And a man will let them lead them around like they do there. Are we going to make Hollywood our example? Are we going to believe God's word about it? Amen. That same group can see the word of God vindicated and what they do? Laugh at it. Because they are dead. Eternally dead. They never was alive. Is ever alive? It'd always be alive. Eternal. But they never was alive. It's always dead. All oh, they might be polished up and believe this, that, or the other. Jesus said, you hypocrites to them, to them priests in that day. How can you say good things for how the abundance of the heart speaks to them? How? Call me good, good rabbi.
good master. He knew what was in their heart. He could perceive what was in their heart. He was the Word. The Bible said the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and discerns the thoughts that's in the heart. Now that sign of Sodom has returned in the natural. And if everything is setting just exactly positionally the way it's supposed to be in the natural, then how can you dis miss it from your mind that the spiritual isn't here at the same time. Both setting is on the scene. Yeah, everybody agrees the natural is right. But oh, if the spiritual, they don't want to believe it because it interferes with their doctrine. Luke 17 is the sign. Luke 17 is the sign that Jesus said that in the last days, the nations and the churches and peoples would be just like it was in Sodom, the Gentile world, just before the burning up of Sodom. And there would be a group looking like Abraham, go back. When Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, go back and see what it was in Sodom. He read the same Bible we read, same Bible. Now go back and look what it was. Here was an elected group called out, Abraham's group. They were looking for a promised son. The Sodomites Believe nothing about it. And that was the lukewarm, the church member, down in Sodom. Look at those three angels coming to each one of them. Watch what signs they showed. Then you'll see what signs we're living in. Amen. Now, that will be the sign. And the voice of the sign will be Malachi 4 to restore the people back to the apostolic faith of the fathers. Amen. There is the sign. There is the voice, exactly according to the Scripture. See, the sign is the sign that it was in Sodom. God manifested in human beings. And he said, where is your wife, Sarah? I said, she's in a tent behind you. He said, I'm going to visit you according to the time that I promised you. And he said, and Sarah, back behind, said, how could that be me, an old woman, him, an old man, not my husband out there? An old man said, we was nothing like that with us. He said, it just can't be. And he said, why is Sarah down there? Saying in her heart, how can these things be? And Jesus said, that would return again. I remember Abraham called that man Elohim. God. God, he had had to be. Why? He could discern the thought. And he was exactly on time. And Elohim, the Holy Ghost. Not another person, the same person. Returning into the church and would do the same thing. That would be the sign. And the voice would be, call them back to the Word. Restore the faith of the children to the fathers. There's a sign and the voice. Signs are usually accepted, but the voice is not. <laughs> they don't like the voice, but they'll take the sign. Usually they'll take it. They like the sign because they like to look at it. It entertains them. But the voice, they don't want to to do it. Remember, now the voice turned back to the Word again. Jesus' sign of Messiah, according to Isaiah 35, the lame shall leap like a heart and all this, that was wonderful. Oh, they accepted that. That was good. They believed that. They believed the sign. Come on, Rabbi, to my church. Will you give you full cooperation? Sure. We believe you. You're the wonderful. You're the rabbi. You're the young prophet. Come in, all kinds of cooperation. The sign's wonderful. But when the voice spoke and said, I and the Father are one, oh my, they couldn't believe that you make yourself go. They didn't want the voice. They liked the sign. They know that they admitted it was the sign of the Messiah, but the voice, they didn't like that. The works that I do shall you do also. And they said, he's Beelzebub. He said, you generation of snakes. Oh, they hated that voice. What did they do? They put that voice out from among them. They put him out. Jesus said if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call his disciples? Remember, in Revelation 3, at the Lady of Sin age, this is the Lady of Sia. The sign of Sodom is to come. The voice returned back to the Word away from these creeds and denominations and turned back to the word, when it come according to Revelation 3, he was put out of the church. Just like it was then. The sign's all right, but not the voice. They don't want him to do with the voice. No, no. The voice, but the, 
Moses said, if they won't, or God said to Moses, they won't believe that first voice of the first sign, try them on the second voice. And if it won't do that, they go get some water and pour it up on the ground. That settles it. That's all. Wash dust, the, uh, dust from your feet, in other words, as Jesus said. So get some water out of the river, pour it up on the ground, become blood, and show that that's what she's going to be drenched in, blood. So that's just exactly what it was. If you didn't believe the sign, then the third sign really got it. All ministries have three signs if it's sent from God. Jesus had three signs. Moses had three signs. Noah had three signs. Elijah had three signs. Everything comes in three signs. Notice, listen, friends, it's getting a little bit late. Oh, my, I didn't know it was that late. Water after. If you can believe the Sodom sign of Luke, see, as he promises, you believe the Sodom sign, then why can't you accept the Malachi voice that follows the sign to return to the Word? The Bible says so, and you see it. Then listen to the voice of the sign. Flee the wrath to come. Don't think because I belong to the UPC, Assemblies of God, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, I have right to go in. God's able to these stones to rise, children of Abraham. Turn to the Word. Back away from your worldlyism and your organizational systems and things. God will destroy him from the face of the earth. Amen. He'll sink him into the depths of the sea of forgetfulness, just like he did Egypt when he called Israel nation out of a nation, when he calls the bride out of the church, he'll go through the tribulation, drink her blood up on the earth, flee the wrath that is to come. Or it's at hand, you can't see these things without, I don't know what you think about them. I'm only responsible for reading them and talking about them. Up to you. You can believe the sign. Then believe the voice that follows the sign. Oh, my. Look, Moses, the type of going out now, he was to tell those people about a promise that had been given to the fathers. I remember my promise to their fathers. And I, what was Moses to do? To turn the hearts of the people back to what the fathers had said. Yeah. And as Moses was then, so is Malachi for to turn the people back to the faith of the fathers. Amen. All these scruples of denominations and so forth. Get back to the Word. I know you, you, lots of people like to do that. I'm not just scolding you here. These tapes go around the world. See? Everywhere. I'm not scolding to you, but I'm scolding to whoever it is, where it belongs. I'm a seed sower. That's all I know to do. It's up to you to make the decision. Flee the wrath that is to come, people. Don't think because you're Pentecost. Don't think because your mother was a fine, sanctified Methodist or your daddy a good shouting Baptist. Don't think that that's going to have anything to do with you. Don't think because you belong to the church that they built or the church that you're building now. Don't think because you Pentecost was spoken tongues and danced in the Spirit and run up and down the floors 40 years ago. Don't think because you've had healing meetings and so forth. Don't fail to see that sign of the pillar of fire that God has vindicated and the voice behind it to turn to the... Back to God. Don't let it pass you. There's a sign and a voice. And a man raises up with a sign the same old school of thought, there's something wrong. It isn't coming from God. Oh, my. Make his path straight now. And you believe it? Then return, O oh blind, and disperse to your own. The, Bible, the songwriter said, nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The signs that the Bible foretold. The Gentile days are numbered with horrors encumbered. Return, O oh disperse to your own. Come back. Return back. The prophet said, it'll be light in the evening time. Just before the sun completely blacks out. It'll be light. Walk in the light while there is light. After a while, the ecumenical council will have you, and there's no way for light then. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, it's in your hands now. I, I sowed seed. I don't know where they fell. I pray that you'll bless them wherever they are. 
May they find their place weighed down and root out all the stony places and all the green briar roots and as it was and get all the unbelief out of the way. Grant it, Father. We now commit this to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. With your head bowed, your eyes closed. Tomorrow night is a banquet. Sinners of the city, I'll, the Lord willing, I'll have to speak to them. I'm speaking to a mixed congregation now. I would be daring to preach this. It'd just make them blinder than ever on a meeting like that. <laughs> But you tonight, do you believe that you've seen the sign and can you hear the voice? If you have and you believe, and you, you have and you believe but you haven't accepted it yet, Christ in his fullness, would you raise up your hand and let every head be bowed down, every eye closed? Raise up your hand and say, remember me, Brother Branham, as you pray. I'll be glad to do it. God bless you. Our Heavenly Father, the Bible said, as many as believe was baptized. I pray, Lord, if these people that raise their hands, that they believe that they have been baptized in Christian baptism, may they find the church that does it and be baptized. Grant it, Lord. May they not only be baptized with water, which is only a, an outward sign that something inside has happened. The Bible said there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism, and that baptism is spiritual baptism. The body being washed is just only a, an illustration or to give a sign that something inside has happened. But it's that soul that's got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the eternal coming into that human nature and changing it around to make it a believer. I pray that they'll receive the Holy Spirit. I command them to you now as trophies of the message and of the grace of Christ. In his name I pray, amen. Now with your heads bowed reverently, I just got seven minutes. I, I couldn't to get out on time. I, I, I couldn't have a prayer line that much time. I'm going to ask you to sit right where you are. I'm sorry to kept you late. We'll pray for everyone. You people, some of you out here has got prayer cards. Don't worry, we'll get you. But we are going to just see if the Holy Spirit will reveal to us now. If you believe in him and you believe that this is a sign, remember the angel, he was a man. He eat, he drank before Abraham, and yet he could, in Sarah in the tent, he could discern the thoughts that was in her heart. That was a sign. He was the Word. Now, if the Word can only come to us, then also He promised to perform the same thing. Now, you out there in the audience that doesn't have prayer cards, and you know you're not going to be in the line, I can't discern which is which unless the Lord would show me, uh, and you believe that God certainly heals the sick, I, I want you to, to believe right now for a few minutes, and just pray and say, Lord Jesus, I know the man speaking is, is a man, but he told me that, has told us tonight and proved it to us that the Holy Spirit, that the world cannot kill, they could kill Jesus when he was in flesh, they put him to death, but now he's raised in a glorified condition, he can never be killed no more. And he said, a little while and the world won't see me no more. Yet ye, the predestinated, the ones that's ordained to eternal life, the church, the bride, ye shall see me. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the consummation. The things that I do shall you do also. All these promises he made. Now, I know when he was here on earth, he, God was in him. He was God. He was the fullness of God. He was all the Word of God made manifest. And the Bible is still God, the Word. And there's some of the revelation yet to be revealed. And he said in the last days, when the world become like Sodom again, the Son of Man would be revealed, and the sign of Sodom would return. Then the voice would call back the people, those who are ordained to life. We know when he was here, 
There were millions of people on the earth that never even knew he was here. No reason to know. He come to those who were predestinated to see it. Now you pray. Now be real quiet. Don't move. Wherever you are, balconies, on the lower floors, wherever you are, don't don't move. You sit real still and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, the Bible said in Hebrews 4 that you are right now a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. And we see you on earth. When you were here on earth, a little woman one time touched your garment, and you turned around and said, Who touched me? She hid herself. But yet her faith was identified. Jesus told her that about her blood issue and said her faith had saved you. Now, he's that same high priest. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll have to act in the same way if you, if you touch him. And what does that do then? There has to be human flesh on earth to speak his voice. I am the vine, you're the branches. There's no way of getting around it, friends. It's just scripture. It's the truth. You ministers, leave that back there. Amen. Now, out there, just be real reverent and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, let me touch your garment. And you see, the closest one to me is 20 feet or more. I don't know a soul out there. I can't even see nobody that I really know tonight sitting there except Pat Tyler sitting here in front, a friend of mine. There's people on cots, stretchers. We've seen this stretcher case open up last night. The man got up and walked away. Why can't you all tonight? See, just believe. That's all you have to do. His presence will do it. Here he is. You're going to have to stand by him to raise you up in the last days. Now, you that believe and think as you're praying through, just look this away now. As Peter and John said, look on us. And they looked earnestly. The man did, expecting to see something. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Now, healing have I none, but such as I have, a gift from God, give I you. If you'll just believe it, God will work it. I'm only asking you to believe it. Such as I have, I'll give to you. If you believe it, God will work it. Just try it. Here, here it is right now. Amen. I like that. There's a lady sitting right here. She's kind of heavy set, sitting right here on the end. You have a prayer card, lady. Kind of a heavy set. You don't have a, right here. You don't have a prayer card? Yes. You don't have a prayer card? You believe anyhow? You don't need a prayer card. If you believe. There's a rebound in the voice. That's the reason it's hard to call people like this. But try to listen to me as close as you can now. I don't know you. You have no prayer card. Therefore, you'll not be on the platform. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you believe that what it would be the same thing just like you revealed to the woman what her trouble was, the woman at the well, Sarah, what she'd said, and so forth? you believe that? You believe that it would be all right? You're suffering with a blood condition. Something wrong with your blood. If that's right, raise up your hand. Like, all right. You don't have it now. It turns right over you. Jesus Christ is honored. Now, I've never seen the woman in my life. Now, what is that? It's got to be spirit. Now, you can say like the Pharisees, that's the devil. Well, you get their reward. You say it's Christ, you get the reward of Christ. I believe that it's a word being identified in these last days. Not me. Here, here's another little lady sitting right down here. She's suffering with varicose veins in her legs. She has complications. She has heart trouble. She's praying for a loved one. That's a brother. She's weeping now. She's in contact. That brother is very seriously, it's a diabetic case, and also he has another shadow, he's a sinner, and you're praying for him, that's right. Miss Welton, if you believe with all your heart, God will do it for him. You believe it? That's your name. Praise the Lord. Now, is that any more than what Jesus said to Simon? Yes. Your name is Simon. You're the son of Jonas. Just have faith. Don't doubt it. Believe it with all your heart. If you believe it, God will bring it to pass. If you can just... Here. Here's a little lady sitting right over here looking right at me here. She's kind of got red hair. Her hair's pulled back. Can't you see that light, kind of an amber circling around over the woman? She knows it's happening right now. Of course, she feels it. It's so close to her, she can't help from feeling it. 
If that's right, lady, raise up your hand. That's it. Now, I'm a total stranger to you. I don't know nothing about you. But you were sitting there praying. Huh? That's right, wave your hand right here. Now, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which he is, a high priest sitting at the right hand of God, and I'm just standing here by a gift with myself un, out of, just out of human reasoning, not thinking on my own, a way to relax my own mind and thinking and just let God move in. Do you believe that he, and me, God knows I don't know you, and you know the same. So if the God will reveal to me your trouble or something you're waiting for or wanting or something more, you believe that God will, can do that? You've got trouble with your back. That's one of the things you're praying for. And you got trouble with your eyes. You believe that God will heal them and make them well? You do. You do. You believe God can tell me who you are? Mrs. Hallman, you believe with all your heart now? You can have what you ask for. You believe? Here's the elderly woman sitting a little, a little ways behind her there. <clears throat> She's praying also. <clears throat> she has diabetes. I hope she don't miss this. It's right over. She's kind of aged. Just a minute. May the Lord help me. Or, as she called it. All right? I see when she is in contact. She isn't from here. She's from Louisiana. Her, her city is a place called Singer, Louisiana. And... She's suffering with diabetes. Her name is Mrs. Doyle. That's right, raise up your hand, all right? I'm a total stranger to her, never seen her in my life. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, knows all about you. There's a lady sitting back there in the same city, a place called Singer. She's suffering with high blood pressure, and her name is Clark. You believe, Mrs. Clark? All right, you can have what you ask for. You believe? There's the sign. Listen at the voice. Yes. Repent. Get back to God as quick as you can. Jesus Christ is here in the power of his resurrection. A wicked and an adulterous generation receives the sign of Jesus Christ living among people. He couldn't do that just with me. It's got to be you too. See? The woman had to touch his garment. You had to touch his garment. We're just instruments. Do you believe with all your heart? Now, if you believe it, how many believe it? Raise your hands like this. I truly believe it. Now, if you believe it, Jesus said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You believe that? Now, it's late. We haven't time. We're 25 minutes now until uh, 10. Would you just lay your hands over on one another then and just do as I tell you now? Just put your hands on one another. Now, you know upstairs there where you're at. Now, you know, as well as anything now, after the scripture being preached and clearly identified all the way across the building, I see another one right now, see, and another one right here, prostrate trouble, a lady with TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just everywhere now, but it weakens you. What, diff what more? You see 50? Sometimes there is that. You want to see 70 the next time. Jesus did that one time at Syker, and the whole city believed on him. Yes. They were watching for the Messiah. The Messiah is here. The Holy Spirit, the Messiah this day, the Messiah that's making the word be vindicated of his promise. Now, I want each one of you, as you lay your hands on each other, if you're believers. Now, if you don't pray for yourself. You pray for that person, and they're going to be praying for you. Now, the same word that promised this in the last days, promised also, and remember, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. The healing coming back is the voice that the sign has been recognized. They lay hands on the sick as a sign. The voice is a hallelujah, the Lord's heal me. Now, if these sign, accompany a voice, that sign, if you are a believer, it will accompany, the voice will accompany the sign. If I give you this 
sign that I've told you comes from God and God promised it in this day. It's been so thoroughly laid out there's not nothing but an infidel can keep from believing it. See? Then God turned around and confirmed it to make it so. Now he's here. Now each one in the way you pray at your own church, if it's to yourself, loud, whatever it is, you pray for the person you got your hands on because they're praying for you. And now look up and in the presence of the Messiah, the Christ, the resurrected one still alive after 2,000 years. How can we be so numb in the spirit? That ought to set this nation on fire. That ought to make Beaumont repent and sackcloth and ashes. But will it do it? No. But you who are looking for him and believe that he would do it and keep his word, it's to you now the promise is given. Put your hands on somebody and pray while I pray for you from here. Lord Jesus, enough has been said. Enough has been done. The word that has been promised has been made manifested. The Messiah, the Christ of God, is in divine presence. We feel him. We see him. We know that he promised this in the last days as it was in the days of Sodom. So shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. Then we know we see the, the fire in the skies, the atomic bombs. We see the worm-eaten nations, nations of breaking. We see that Israel's in the homeland. Every sign that could be promised has been fulfilled. The next thing is the promised Son coming. Oh, eternal God, in the presence of Jesus Christ, the great Holy Spirit that's here now, confirming that he's here, hear the prayer of these people. Hear these Christians that when I leave, they won't say, Brother Branham did this. Somebody else they didn't know laid hands on them and they were healed. But you promised that the voice had a sign to it. And may they be healed as I commit them to you. In Jesus' name.